good afternoon, uh, one and all. Thanks to, thank you for coming down to Parliament House and enjoying the wonderful weather that I continue to provide in the uh, fabulous electorate of Brisbane Central. Um, before I commence, uh, can I start by acknowledging the Jagger and Turrbal people, the traditional owners of the land in which we are meeting today, and pay my respects to elders both past and present. I also recognise those whose ongoing efforts to protect and promote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures will leave a lasting legacy for the elders and leaders of the future. Uh, can I welcome, of course, the, uh, the 36 members of Queensland Parliament who are going to be coming in and out of today's, uh, today's event. Um, some of them in, are in the chamber and um, we welcome them as, as they arrive. Can I acknowledge, obviously, the Premier Campbell Newman and thank him for being here today. Uh, the seven ministers who are flowing in and out of today's event, including the Honourable Attorney General Jared Blay, uh, the Health Minister, the Honourable Lawrence Springborg, um, our lovely Speaker of the House, Fiona Simpson, thank you for being here today as well. Uh, I'm just looking at who else is here at the moment. Uh, there's several Assistant Ministers here as well. Assistant Minister Steve Minikin, Assistant Minister Deb Frecklington, uh, as well as several other Federal Members. Jane Prentice is also here and Senator Brett Mason who is here as well. And I encourage all of you to engage with the Members of Parliament, uh, both State and Federal, uh, to our distinguished guests from um, lives live well to use the day uh, so that you are able to engage with members of parliament because uh, that of course is what we're here to do. Um, to Police Commissioner Ian Stewart, uh, I welcome you as well as many other representatives of other organisations from the drug, alcohol and, and mental health sectors. It was about six months ago I think um, that I first met CEO of Lives Live Well, Mitchell Giles, um, who made an appointment and came in to see me in my office uh, which is coincidentally about 100 metres down the road from Lives Lives Wells office. Um, I immediately uh, recognised the good work that they did and um, we discussed uh, ways in which the profile of Lives Lives Well could be lifted and suggested to him the idea of coming into Parliament and meeting parliamentarians. Um, because dealing with the consequences of alcohol um, we must recognise that not only is it indeed a complex social problem, it is a statewide problem. Uh, from the discrete Indigenous communities of the North all the way to Coolangatta, which requires a multifaceted approach for a long-term solution. And as part of any solution, uh, the government, the community and industry need to work together to develop and implement a range of strategies and programs to promote healthier and safer cultures around alcohol. I have asked CEO Mitchell Giles to assist me in relation to this because I am deeply committed to addressing this in my own community. The first speaker who I'd like to introduce is Barry Scott, the Chair of Lives Live Well. Prior to his appointment as Chairman of Lives Live Well, Barry was President of the Australian Drug Foundation Queensland and has over 40 years experience in senior positions of companies such as Coles, Myers and Woolworths Groups. I now invite Barry to the lectern to address us this afternoon. Thank you, Robert. We're indeed fortunate to have such an esteemed gathering for this event and I thank all our distinguished guests for joining us and we're really grateful that the Premier is able to launch Lives Live Well. Lived well. Thank you Premier. As well as welcoming you all, I'd just like to take this moment to thank our other speakers including our MC, the member for Brisbane Central, Robert Calvalucci, who's committed not only to his constituency but also to addressing issues around drug and alcohol use. Dr Anthony Lynham is a maxillofacial surgeon and our first LLW ambassador. In his professional capacity, Anthony has to deal with the consequences of intoxication on a weekly basis. He's more aware than most of us of the life-altering impacts of alcohol-related violence. And also speaking today will be a consumer of our services. Lives Live Well is a relatively new entity formed a little over a year ago by the merger of the Gold Coast Drug Council, GCDC, the Alcohol and Drug Foundation of Queensland, ADFQ, and the Queensland Drug and Alcohol Council, QDAC. The providence of Lives Live Well is impressive. Through the combined activities of its merged partners, it can trace a long-standing and proud history of community service 
to reduce the personal and social impacts of alcohol and other drug use. Currently our staple of programs includes three residential therapeutic communities. Mirakai on the Gold Coast that caters for younger persons with significant mental health issues. Closer to Brisbane is Logan House with an older population, also with high levels of comorbidity. And finally in North Queensland and located just outside Merida, Mariba is Shanty Creek, a recently owned facility offering a culturally appropriate program for Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander peoples. In addition to these residential facilities, LLW offers a range of family and youth orientated programs on the Gold Coast and provides generalist alcohol and drug services throughout Queensland, from Dolby and Toowoomba to Charters Towers and Bowen, from the Gold Coast to Gladstone and Longreach. LLW has recently been contracted as the lead agency of Headspace at Southport. As an organisation, we're committed to providing our stakeholders with services that are cost effective, evidence informed and outcomes focused. And our recipe for this is straightforward. It involves the right mix and intensity of professional services, working collaboratively with existing personnel and community support networks to provide an optimum environment in which recovery can occur and hopefully flourish. Like all good recipes, ours needs to be tried, tested and revised in the light of experience. To assist us in this regard and to help foster a culture of professionalism and inquiry, we maintain ongoing relationships with Queensland, Griffith, James Cook and Bond Universities. The human services area are generally faced with the dilemma of having to allocate limited resources and to meet increasing levels of service, need and demand. Achieving the right balance is no straightforward matter. At both an organisational and sector level, our challenge is to work positively, creatively and pragmatically to deliver on our collective value proposition. Investment in alcohol and drug services delivers handsome returns for both individuals and society. Our response in difficult times must not be characterised by dejection, despondency and diminished activity, but instead by a determination and a drive to find innovative and more efficient ways of working. Ladies and gentlemen, the LLW Board is of the view that in addition to our service delivery programs, we should adopt and prosecute a strong advocacy position around broader alcohol and drug issues. For example, ensuring that alcohol policy and regulation is formulated in an environment that's concerned with optimising individual and public health, community safety and public amenity. We are concerned about the incidence of alcohol fueled violence and respectively assert that initiatives around pricing, product promotion, point of sale issues, all have the demonstrated potential to contribute significantly to a healthier and happier society. The name of our organisation, Lives Live Well, reflects our vision for a community in which all may experience their life as having been lived well. Achieving that vision is a social project requiring a sustained and collaborative partnership between government and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. I now ask Premier Campbell Newman if he would come to the lectern and address us this afternoon. Well, thanks very much, uh, Rob, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the uh, Parliamentary Green, the Speaker's Green. It's great to welcome you here today for this very important event. Can I acknowledge the Turbal and the Jagera peoples? These are their traditional lands, and it's right and proper that we do that on this occasion. Uh, to my fellow members of Parliament, the Ministers and Assistant Ministers, to the Speaker, uh, to Federal MPs and Senators that are here, to Mr Barry Scott, the, the Chairman of Lives Live Well, and Mr Mitchell Giles, the CEO, 
uh, to members of the board, to Mr Anthony Lynham, oral and maxillofacial surgeon, and the Lives Lived Well Ambassador, other distinguished guests, particularly from the health uh, profession. Also, we have the Commissioner of Police. Welcome today, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, it is great to be here today to launch Lives Lived Well, the amalgamation of three formidable forces, the Alcohol and Drug Foundation Queensland, the Gold Coast Drug Council, and the Queensland Drug and Alcohol Council. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, too many Queenslanders, particularly young Queenslanders, remain ensnared by drug and alcohol addiction. It is a serious health issue. It's a major social issue. And the scenes of alcohol fuel violence, which have become far too common, continue to distress me and indeed members of my government. It's also a very private and painful issue, one that derails lives and tears families apart. Now, my team has taken a very tough stance on the supply of illicit substances. However, we recognise that that is only one part of a very big puzzle that has to be solved, a very complex puzzle it is indeed. And at the heart of the matter, you ultimately really have to, to sort of settle on the fact that it's the treating of the person, uh, not just the problem, which is the core of this whole thing. It's each individual that ultimately uh, we have to find a pathway back to a normal, productive life. That is ultimately the solution. We therefore recognise that to make a real difference in the lives of people who are struggling with addiction, that the government must invest in and draw upon the expertise of an organisation like Lives Lived Well. That's why we're very happy to provide $7 million in funding on top of the federal government's $3.7 million so that you can do what you do best, reaching out to people in need. With counselling services, residential drug treatment centres, youth outreach, prison and drug court diversion programs, and community and family support groups. Every day, ladies and gentlemen, at least one person walks into one of Lives Live World residential services seeking help. And every day, they receive it without, without question without judgment. Your services and your listening ear mean the difference between hope and despair, between recovery and relapse, even between, sadly, life and death. Along with everyone here today, ladies and gentlemen, my ministers and I support the work of this new organisation in their quest to prevent harm before it escalates and when it does escalate, to treat the person by getting to the root causes of their particular problem. We're strong supporters in this government of the National Drug Strategy, a coordinated national policy direction for addressing alcohol, tobacco and drugs issues. We continue to back non-government organisations like this one to the tune of $23 million a year and to provide mental health, counselling and treatment services through our public health system. Most importantly, I say to you today, ladies and gentlemen, that we recognise how important it is that we have the best evidence available about addressing the impact of substance abuse, and that means listening to the professionals. And that's why we're committed to continuing our collaborative relationship with Lives Live Well, because this organisation is living it every single day. You're having a profound impact, a positive impact, on the health and happiness of so many Queenslanders and on their behalf, I'd like to say a very big thank you. And it's my great pleasure to be here today for the official launch of Lives Lived Well. Congratulations on all your hard work to get to this day. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Our next speaker, Dr Anthony Lynham, is a maxofacial surgeon at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. His main focus is trauma surgery and he is Lives Lives Well's first official ambassador. Thank you. Uh, Premier, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I just say from the outset how honoured I am to be an ambassador to such a valuable organisation. Lives Live Well is a strong group, strengthened through amalgamation that is desperately needed in our state. Every day I see the first-hand effects of alcohol and violence in our community. I've just come from the Royal Brisbane Hospital, I put a cacophony of plates and screws into two guys, and this afternoon there'll be more. It never gets any easier. Um, the assaults from simply trying to enjoy a night out. 
the domestic violence, suicide attempts, random attacks. I've seen it all. And what's worse, I have to patch it up week after week after week. It's taken me a while to realise this, but it's, honestly it's quite senseless working harder and harder, seeing more families hurt by the effects of alcohol and violence. It's absolutely senseless. I knew something had to be done at the other end, and that's the prevention end. Lives Lives Well is involved with treatment programs acting for individuals and the community. Importantly, and very importantly, they have a strong focus to primary prevention. They are also seeking change with our elected representatives to reduce alcohol-related harms. It's tough, I know, as we have a very strong alcohol culture in our country. May I remind everyone that we make one hell of an economic mess with alcohol. It costs us, the community, $15 billion a year to treat alcohol-related harms and injuries, such as the state's generous support to Live Live Well. We only get back $7 billion in tax. A huge amount of this money spent is state government money, a portion of which keeps me and the Royal Brisbane Hospital functioning to treat the outcomes of such senseless violence. So every year we lose $8 billion from the alcohol industry. I often ask, why does the whole community have to pay for this? 75% of my work is directly alcohol related. Over 50% of police work is alcohol related. Just a small decrease in these harms means more elective surgery up the road at the Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital and the equivalent of more police on our streets. I, like Lives Live Well, support a strong collaborative approach between government and community on this very important issue. One project about to be launched is Gladstone Cares. With a $20,000 grant, Lives Live Well will arm parents in the community with knowledge and skills to help reduce young people's drinking and reduce the associated harms. I actively support this campaign and I can't wait to see the outcomes. Every week I see families devastated by alcohol related violence. I have four sons aged between 17 and 26, those danger years. One is police recruit, recruit just yesterday. So it gets home, it gets personal. With every poor kid I see, I imagine that that could be one of my boys lying there. I, like Lives Live Well, am working hard to make sure it's not one of your family, not one of your sons, not one of your daughters that ends up under my care at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Lives Live Well are passionate. They have a history of strong community service. And above all, they'll make a difference. It's because of that that I'm honoured and proud to serve with them. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Our final speaker uh, is a young 16-year-old girl, Claudia, who has been working with Lives Live Well on the Gold Coast service and is here today to tell us a little bit about her journey and her story. I invite her to the stage. Hello, um, my name's Claudia and I've been involved with the youth outreach program at Lives Live Well for about four months now. Um, I started working with the organisation after I was suspended from school. Um, I've been working on ways on how to deal with peer pressure. I've been uh, working on ways on how, how to say no and looking at how to take better care of myself. Um, I'm very thankful uh, that services such as these exist. I feel that without them I'd most definitely be in a different situation. Not only have I been working on ways to say no, um, I've been also learning about the effects of drugs and the threats it has on not only teenagers but adults as well. Um, I've been making better choices and keeping positive and also getting in touch with the mental health unit. Programs uh, like these are extremely beneficial. Teenagers are more likely to be experimenting with drugs and alcohol these days so it's important to keep organisations such as these going. I know that my mum and dad and also my school are internally grateful for services such as these. I'd like to thank the team at the Youth Outreach Program for supporting me and not giving up on me. 
A huge thank, thank you to Anthony um, and the team at Lives Live Well for giving me the honour to speak at today's event. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. That con concludes the, uh, the official part of this afternoon's event. However, uh, there is still uh, refreshments and uh, food and drinks to be provided, so I encourage all of the members uh, who are here today to, uh, to engage with all of the, uh, the people from Lives Live Well, as well as uh, members of the, the, wider, uh, the wider drug and alcohol community. So um, enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, everyone.